Engaging celebrity interviews. Exciting updates from Christian filmmakers. Movie reviews so you can choose your movies wisely. And so much more here on Faith on Film with Isaac Hernandez and Holly McClure. Hello, everybody, and welcome to this episode of Faith on Film. How are you doing, Holly? Doing great. Thanks, Isaac. And I'm excited about our guest today. Uh, yes, you know, uh, now, I, I love movies, of course, but if there's one thing that I've really gotten into lately is episodic series. And, yes. and the reason for me is just that I really begin to connect with the characters rather than just I watch a movie and it's over. I connect right. with the characters and every week, like I'm, I feel like I'm a part of what they're doing. And so th there hasn't been too many Christian, uh, you know, mm -hmm. series that, that have come out. Usually it's just movies. But lately there's been a few that have come out. Of course, the biggest one is The Chosen. I mean, that, right. that's an amazing series. But there's a new one that literally is, uh, is available now on Up Faith and Family. So you, you can go watch this series at upfaithandfamily.com. Uh, and that is, of course, uh, a series called The Stones. Uh, wonderful series. And of course, we're going to get to talk to Cheryl McKay, who's the showrunner and executive producer. Now, Cheryl has been professionally writing since 1997. She's also the writer, by the way. Uh, and she wrote the screenplay for The Ultimate Gift. I don't know if you remember the movie, The Ultimate Gift. That was another great mm -hmm. movie. She, she wrote that screenplay. And she is here today to tell us all about The Stones. But first, let's take a look at the trailer. Oh, McKenna, if you found this on my phone, it means I'm gone. Dad, it's, it's on me. Not the way your father sees it. He thinks it's his fault. Do you have any idea what I would give to hear her voice just one more time? A door appears in my closet. The same door that opened for me. It'll be there for you too. It leads to Central Dispatch. McKenna Stewart. Please report to Central Dispatch. What? This is a dream, right? People still need help, even though your mother is gone. Look, Mick, I know this sounds out there. People from Bible days, like Miriam or Aaron, they're still with us. As in, still alive, but undercover. Do you have any medical experience, or do you just play nurses on TV? <laughs> there are one another's burdens, and thereby fulfill the law of Christ. You're definitely not alone in this. We are right where we are supposed to be, McKenna. What are you? An angel? This whole helper role, I'm gonna have to bow out. Rise up and accept this life-changing role I know you were born to play. is to get the courier assigned to this appointment on the inside. This young woman needs your help desperately. Who are you people, really? If you wanted to grab coffee or something, I want you to feel safe with me. I'm starting to see a little more of your mom and you. Do you ever get used to this miracle stuff? Still amazes me every single time. Cheryl, welcome to Faith on Film. Oh, thank you. It's so nice to be here. Welcome. We, we've all kept in touch over the years through social media and on different projects, but it's so good to have you on talking about your project. So this is well, great. Yes. So talking about your project, we, of course, just saw the trailer right now. But why don't we start off by you just giving us sort of that overview, that what they call that 10,000 foot view um, of, of what the series is all about. Yeah, well, what was really cool was my executive producer, Jeanette, came to me and said her pastor had written this play, and then he turned it into a book manuscript, mm -hmm. and it was based on this crazy concept of a Bible verse where um, it's in Matthew 27 about what happens when um, these characters, like, or these people from the Bible are raised from the dead right after Jesus died and um, uh, rose from the dead as well. And they walked around and talked to people. And then the pastor asked himself, well, 
what if they never left? What if they're still here helping people? And so when I had a chance to take that concept and turn it into a TV series, I got to think through who would I want to pair like from the Bible and what they went through that would match what someone in modern day went through. And they have to work now undercover <laughs> and masquerade around like they belong today. So it was really fun to get to play with that and then pick six episodes worth of issues that would relate to people today. That, that is such a cool concept. Yeah. Okay. How did you get, how did you even narrow down or is it still going like season one, season two? Yeah. Or you just keep on thinking of characters? But, but what were some of your favorites that you first thought, I'm going to infuse these characters? Sure. Um, the very first episode idea that I had was episode four. And that's the one that focuses on our teenager, Katie. And she is a cutter, a teenager with like self-esteem issues. And she it's all tied to promiscuity. So it seemed perfect to match her with Rahab because Rahab could talk to her like, no, I am not a perfect Bible character from the past. I was a prostitute. And she helps her see that it's her decisions that are um, to have sex before marriage that have been eroding her self-esteem. And that's a story I've always wanted to tell. Like you often see movies that they may talk about like the consequences that are like pregnancy or STDs, but it's rare to see something that talks about the emotional consequences. So that was one of the first ones that I wanted to do. So, but one of my other favorites um, in a hard way was episode three we did about infertility, which is actually my true life story with me and my husband. And of course I wanted to hire, or I should say, um, Sarah, I wanted to employ the use of Sarah in the episode because Sarah struggled with that in the Old Testament as well. Oh, I love this. Wow. I love these. Yeah. Now, this is going to be a little bit of a tough question here, okay? And uh, okay. I had not even thought about asking it, but it just came up in okay. my mind right now. Mm -hmm. There are some people that would say, well, now, wait a minute. When people die, mm -hmm. they no longer are here. They're no longer available. Right. How would you answer them if they came to you and said mm -hmm. that? Sure. Um, there's the reason we have a disclaimer at the front of the episode that we try to tell people, look, this isn't true. This isn't like this is an allegory. We're doing an allegorical telling, just like Jesus would tell parables where he would use something as an example. Uh, the one mystery we find in the scripture about this is the Bible doesn't tell us what happened to them. But one thing I want to be really clear about is this is not reincarnation. This is not people talking to the dead because we know God is very clear about that in his word that those things are not okay. But we also don't know what happened to those people. And so the allegory we're using is playing with the what if they didn't leave and they stayed to help. And, and, much, like what, and much like what the chosen has done, mm -hmm. it's saying, hey, we're not trying to be the Bible mm -hmm. first by verse mm -hmm. by verse. We're yes. just stories that yes. are about these characters. Yes. I mean, that's the same concept, really, yes. what you're doing. Yeah. And what was really neat was we cast Cameron Arnett really early on. And he was the one who talked to me about that, about are you going to do like the chosen? Because I don't think the chosen had that mm -hmm. disclaimer in the beginning and it caused a little bit of controversy. And he goes, what about if we headed off at the pass up front and put something? And so he was actually the instigator in a Absolutely. good way that got us thinking about that like just in case we want people to know this is allegorical um, and we want to be able to relate to bible characters that um, what they went through still applies today but we're not making that up that's still true like what they went through does apply mm -hmm. to the things that we went through today so that's not fi that part's not fictional it's just the letting them work undercover today <laughs> that's fictional i love it i love it you know th this is um you're, it's going to premiere on Up, right? On yes. Up it's it's going to be on their streaming service, Up Faith and mm -hmm. Family. And we'll be starting September 5th, and it'll run for six weeks. We'll have a new episode that they release every Thursday. Cheryl, this is such a cool show, though. It's like I wish we get into mainstream or Netflix or something where people will go, wait, what? And it's a great concept. It's a great idea. Well, thank you. So it's like, we're excited. We're, I mean, they have actually been great partners with us. They're doing a lot of marketing behind it and they're excited that we have a accompanying book to go with it, a discussion guide. Um, it's like a 200 page devotional that the director and I wrote because we're hoping to get a lot oh, wow. of um, people rallying around the show and doing acts of kindness that are inspired by things that are in each episode. And so what we appreciate about them is how behind the show they've been getting um, and the excitement that they've had because we're letting them have it exclusive for those first nine months. Oh, wow. So what is at the heart of this series? What, what do you hope the viewing audience uh, walks away with after seeing the series? Well, one of the first things that I knew I wanted was the tagline to this show. And we put it on our poster and it's called, You Are Never Alone. And the reason I wanted that as our tagline is that it's all over the show. 
that people show up to help. It's not just in the Bible characters, which is, of course, a huge thing, uh, but God is sending those people. And then you have McKenna, which is Madeline Carroll's character, who's showing up to help people in all of her flawedness. And she's like, I, she doesn't feel equipped to help these people. But she, even being alongside the, them, are able to help them feel like they're not alone either. And I know when I was going through my um, infertility story and journey, um, there were a lot of times I felt alone because I wasn't talking about it. And we're hoping that this show will spark conversations about addiction. Like we have two different types of addiction storylines. We've got opioid, we've got alcoholism with the, with the father of the show, Rusty Joyner, you've interviewed, I know, um, where he is giving into alcoholism because of dealing with the grief of his wife. And so we're hoping that as people see all the different things that they're gonna find themselves somewhere in this and know that they're not alone and that what the Bible people went through applies to today. And we hope every episode will make people wanna read more about um, those characters. Hmm. You know, you are a showrunner for this. And for folks of you who don't know what a showrunner is, <laughs> this is the person who comes up with the concept. They write this series themselves so they know what the content is. And then they're producing executives and promoting it. I mean, you're following, you're shepherding it all the way through. <laughs> Not an easy job, by no. the way, to say. You know, I mean, girl, how long have you been working on this? That's tough to do and get. Well, we decided to choose this project about three years ago. We shot two years ago. Uh, the post-production process took a lot longer than I had hoped, and then it became the marketing and the distribution and the PR. I feel like I'm the PR person right now. Like, And then my lovely executive producer, Jeanette, is the social media guru for us. Um, and yes, as a small team and a lower budget production, we do hold a lot of hats. But you used the perfect word, which is steward. It's hard for me sometimes to call myself a producer. Um, I like to call it shepherding like or, or stewarding a project from start to finish, and I've yeah. never had the chance to do that before. This yeah. was the first. So that part of it is great. Um, but my heart of hearts is to be a writer. And so that part of this job was the most fun for me, which was getting to think through the show Bible. Like I have 10 years worth of these shows we could make. Um, there's about 60 different combinations I worked oh. on for the show Bible. And this is just the beginning. I wrote it like a mini series so that we could sell it for sure one way or another, whether we, or not we could make another episode. But the idea is we hope it catches on and we hope to make it for about 10 years, even if it's just six episodes at a time. Okay, I have to ask you this because as a, as the showrunner, as the writer and the writer that you are, yeah, um, it's hard to name your favorite baby. But which <laughs> which show or scene out of the series so far did you kind of go? Oh, that's my favorite. I, you know, by the performances, the actors, whatever. Which is kind of one that you're one of your favorites, or you know, a pet. Well. One of the ones is a fight that um, Sarah has and McKenna have with Miriam. Miriam is played by Karen Abercrombie. She's also one of the Bible characters, but you don't know it until episode six because she's sort of the guy that's in the computer that is telling McKenna, oh, here's the person in crisis. We need to match you with this Bible character. Go and help. And she gets to show them a peek of what's going on um, on screen of here's a peek into their lives. They get to spy on them. Um, but in that one scene, Sarah, it, she actually wants to quit because she finds out that she may not be there to give this lady the message that she thought she was here, which is by this time next year, you'll have a baby. And so when they go in there, they crash what we call central dispatch. And she's like, I don't want to do this. Why are you sending me to help her? I can't help her. And then Miriam as Karen, you know, Karen Abercrombie is so fantastic. She reprimands her like, who are you to tell God what his message is for somebody and go out there and do your job. And it's a really, it's fun, it's got grit, and it's got a lot of truth in it. And my favorite line she has in that scene is about how maybe you're not here to help because of your happy ending, maybe you're here to help because of your messy middle. Oh, ooh, I like that, I like that. So it's not just all Christianese, sweet and simple, huh? No, it's not, especially not that one. <laughs> we don't give Pat answers because we don't all get them. And I'm hoping Thank people you. who don't can will appreciate that. But okay. I, yeah, and I think that's smart, because, you know what I mean? <laughs> Life isn't clean and simple and neat, and it's not just, here's your Bible scripture, hope that answers the question for you. I mean, sometimes you don't get answers, so right. I love that you're writing mm. like that. Good for you. Thank you. Now, the show is called These Stones, not These Bible Characters. <laughs> <laughs> We've exactly. talked about, yeah, we've talked about these Bible characters, but yes. we haven't talked about the stones. What, what stones. is, yes. you've named it these stones. There must be a pretty big significance yes. to the stones. Yes. Well, one of the symbolisms throughout, like when, um, in the beginning, I'm not spoiling it. You saw it in the trailer. Um, McKenna's mom is dead. Uh, 
and she had left behind videos to talk. But she, McKenna finds all these stones that her mom had left behind in a rock garden that have words on them like hope and faith and love and just nice messages to them and courage is the one that she holds up in the scene. And what happens in the story is that by the time you get to the end of each episode, each person who was just helped by a Bible character some way gets a stone. Usually it's handed to them some way from the Bible character or it's hidden somewhere for them to find. But McKenna gets a matching stone because in every episode she's also learning the same lesson, but in a different way. And so we'll have, we have six words that we use in the first season and we'll have a different one every time in the future. You know, the Bible has great symbolism that goes with stones mm -hmm. as well. Yeah. Okay, and plus the Jewish culture, you know, for how they lay mm -hmm. stones and Schindler's List, you saw them play homage by laying mm -hmm. a stone on the grave. I mean, exactly. a lot of cultures where that is Christian. Okay, you've used um, Cameron Arnett, uh, yes. Karen Abercrombie, uh, like <laughs> they're the who's who of Christian. <laughs> Are you yes. going to run out when you're just doing six? You got to do more? Do they come back as different people or what? Yeah. Well, I, there's definitely room for them to come back. Um, with Karen being the assignment giver in the computer, I loved that by our sixth episode, we were able to let her out and do a case. It's actually, I know, Isaac, you've seen the whole series. Mm -hmm. You know how special that is when she gets to come out and do a case. So I would love if she always came back to give her a case of her own every season. And then I could switch up who's in the box. Like, I would love to bring Sarah back, Michael Lynn Hansen, to play oh. someone who gives out an assignment. And Cameron Arnett is the one who pinch hits in that role in the finale because Karen's busy <laughs> in the field. Mm -hmm. But we have so much flexibility because we set it up in that first season. You sure do. And a lot of room to keep it going and going up. I love this project. I love the trailer. I love what I saw. And I told Isaac, I can't wait to watch the series because yeah. it looks so interesting and and well done. Well Very shot. Well done. Sound is gone. It's like, and I'm... I know we're like overemphasizing it, but so much stuff that you see is not well done and it's like <laughs> echoing the sound and the lighting is off and you're like, what, what were they thinking? But beautifully done, I'm telling you. And everyone may recognize the star from I Can Only Imagine mm -hmm. and she was huge in that film and lots of people saw it so they may recognize yes. her in this as well. Yes, and I wrote it for her without telling her. And then did I, <laughs> I, I, cause she did my movie Indivisible. So I co-wrote yeah. that with the director. And so I was, I had always wanted to work with her again. She's a gem of a human being and a, and a Christian and it's everything about her. So I was like, all right, I'm gonna write this for her and hope she says yes. And then I got it off to her and I'm like, please come play. And as a side note of beauty, when she was at the 700 Club being prayed over backstage during doing promotion for I Can Only Imagine, someone prayed over her and said, when you're 26 years old, someone's gonna come to you and say they wrote a role for you and it's gonna oh, be wow. a blessing to you. And it turned oh, out to be wow. these stones. Oh, oh I love wow, that you wow, said wow. that. I love that you told us that, wow. Mm -hmm. yeah. That is, yes. that, to me, that is spiritually so significant about the blessing over this whole yeah. thing, Cheryl. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah, that was uh, a blessing to us, definitely. Because she years is before, pretty... she was prayed into it before you even knew. Four years earlier, because I think she was 22 when she did the other movie. So, uh, but yeah, it was like that wake up moment for her that she realized mm -hmm. that this was the project. So despite all the other offers she had, she said yes to us. Well, Wonderful. gosh, God bless you and everything you're doing. <laughs> and man, just, you know, support you and lift you up as you're in there directing and producing and show running and doing all the writing and doing all the things you're doing. And we'll be excited to have you back in season two and talk oh, about what's so going on there. <laughs> well, thank yeah. you. I really appreciate it. But before we leave, there's one more question that I have that may be a rhetorical question because I think I know the answer already, but I really would love for our viewers to learn this. What's it going to take for you to do the next season and the season after that and the season after that? Well, the usual answer in this world is funding. Um, we hope that after it gets better known that we'll ha have some partners there come is. to the table who just want to help us keep this thing going. They'll believe in it. Um, and because you know how hard it is these days to make things, especially at a streaming level. Um, but yet we have SAG actors, so it's not a cheap show to make. Um, so we're hoping that we um, can find some people who want to partner with us on that um, and keep it going. <laughs> And that's part of what I was hoping to hear is that it's going to take for people to watch this series and make yes. it just it, for them to just show the networks show in mm -hmm. this case, I guess, of TV. Look, there's people mm -hmm. out there that want to see this kind of programming. Yes. And then maybe they'll uh, get involved mm -hmm. in some of the funding. Right? right. How can they get in touch oh. with you, Cheryl? How can they contact mm -hmm. you? Um, they can find me on Facebook. I have an I have a writer page. We also have a These Stone the series um, that they can follow for all of our social media updates. Okay. Our official um, company is Stone Impact Media, and we keep all of our social links on that as well. 
Um, so we would love to hear from people. I especially would love to hear if anyone tries any of the things in our book and goes out and spreads kindness in their communities, like painting words mm -hmm. on rocks and handing them out. I would love to hear oh, from oh, people cool. who try those things. Oh, Great that. idea. Yeah. Well, thank you. Thank you for uh, being with us today. Uh, we uh, so certainly hope everybody, everybody go out there and watch that on uh, um, Up. It's, it's it. Up TV streaming, right? Uh, yes. Yes. Great. Up Faith and Family. And then Up this Faith coupon code is STONES30 that they can use, capital letters, and they'll get 30% off their first month. All right. Ooh, so, yep. so, yeah. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah. Thanks, Cheryl. God bless. Hi, I'm Cheryl McKay, the screenwriter of These Stones, and I hope you'll catch our show on Up Faith and Family. And thank you for watching Faith on Film. You know, Isaac, I agree with you that this is such a quality series, mm -hmm. and it's got great, exciting characters and something very different. This is unusual. And first of all, I, I mentioned it in the interview, but I mean, again, you guys, to be a showrunner, that means you thought of the idea, you wrote it, it's your concept, you took it, you pitched it and they picked it up. It's a pretty big deal. Not a lot of people get to do what they come up and write with. So I'm so impressed with Cheryl and what she's done. Funny thing is, a year ago, she was at Content, which is an event that takes place at Capernaum, for those of you who don't know. And a lot of writers, directors, people, storytellers come to this conference, and they have several days of, of things, and they pitch their shows or their ideas. And um, Isaac and I happen to be on one of those where they can pitch it for our show, Faith on Film. And I remember her, and she said, you know, this is concept. I said, it looks great. She had, you know, an amazing presentation. I said, when you get it done, we will put you on our show and feature it. And lo and behold, a year later, she did it. She went out and did it. She got it done. It is amazing. And we are proud that we had a chance yes. to interview her and display it. And I hope people go watch it. Like you said, Isaac, what, it's on Up with Family? Up Faith and Family. Up, which I th which is the it's the uh, the on demand portion of Up TV. Okay, there you go. Okay, folks, you've got to go see it now. Another movie that's been out and made a lot of hoopla over Labor Day weekend yeah. was the movie Reagan, which we know Mark Joseph's a friend of ours. He has been for over mm -hmm. three decades, really talking about this movie. He has wanted to do it for what twenty years, fifteen twenty, years. and this is a love project because he finally got it done. It was filmed actually several years ago, but we're getting it out and producing it. And he had a tough time at the box office because you're up against, you know, the Marvel and the mm -hmm. big films and the love stories and all that. But it came in fourth and almost third. And what the critics, I mean, bashed the 18 percent critics didn't like it. But that just goes to show you critics don't uh, know what they're talking about, except for me. <laughs> critics don't know what they're talking about because the patriots love this movie. Christians yes. love this movie. People like you and I who remember Reagan in that era love being reminded of the patriotism one and mm -hmm. we went through hard times everything wasn't easy and it's such a great movie for younger people isn't it you loved yeah. it too right? i sure it? did i sure did you know? i, I love the concept <laughs> of having the story having all the events mm -hmm. that uh, that reagan was a part of iconic events that we all remember but having them been told by a russian spy that was assigned to spy on him basically Right, and John really played cool. that character. And then also, you know, Dennis Quaid, we can't say enough about his oh, performance. Oh, my goodness. He spoke about when he came on the Reagan Ranch that he felt mm -hmm. Reagan there, and he really embodied his not only just a caricature portrayal, but really felt like he wanted yeah. to take on. And where they related was is that Dennis was raised by a Christian mother who he said he wasn't always necessarily Christian around her, but it was love <laughs> because she always reminded him of, you know, Jesus is there. Yeah. And then, of course, Reagan's mother, Nellie, she was very much about, you know, reminding him who he yeah. was and who he was in God. And he had that faith instilled in him. So I think Dennis really related with the faith element of that. And it shows. It shows in this yeah. movie. Great performances. It's beautifully told. Um, a lot of poignant scenes, especially the scene in the hospital after the assassination mm -hmm. with Tip O'Neill coming in and, you know, the Democrat, the Republic thing. But, you know, have they shared a prayer together. Yeah. So I think it's going to surprise a lot of people. It'll remind a lot of people, I think, of what we went through. There was, um, you know, there was riots on campuses that Reagan had to deal with. There was the Russia, Russia, Russia problem that Reagan <laughs> had to deal with. I mean, it's a lot of similarities to today. Yeah, there is, isn't there? I mean, a lot, a lot. Yeah. And I just, I love that. I think the movie, um, I really believe that just the longevity in theaters, more and more people are going to want to go see it when it calms down from this weekend. But I also think it's going to do great on streaming. And it's, yeah. I just really am proud of the work that Mark did and his team. 
and um, excited for them to see this finally come into fruition and do so well. And again, yeah. you know, what do the critics and left Hollywood know? They're woke. We don't care what they think. The Patriots are going to support this movie, right? Go see that's, it. That's that's right. And you know, we've we've seen the trailer before. We've shown it on the show. But let's let's take a look at it one more time. I will be frank with you that as a citizen, I would not like to see any political party outlawed on the basis of its ideology. Because I still believe, Mr. Chairman, that democracy can handle it. I was a brand new KGB officer, given my first intelligence assignment. A certain actor and union leader. Dutch, there's a purpose for you, like. You can run from a bully for so long, but after a while, you're going to have to stand up to him. It's my boy! about to be another war right here in Hollywood. The commies on one side, the mob on the other. And you're right in the middle, son. If you put as much work into your career as you do making your speeches, you'd have an Oscar by now. Hello, I'm Nancy Davis. Hello, Nancy Davis. I'm Ron Reagan. I'm curious, Ron. What would you say is the issue of our time? No question about it. Communism and the Soviet Union. Get in the game. Run for office. You. I'm running for governor, and I would like your vote. I've forgotten your name. Do his initials help, or R? Honey, Roy Rogers is here. And he's running for governor. Ronnie, remember when we met? You told me that you wanted to make a difference in this world. You know what you have to do. Governor Reagan, again, typically is against such a proposal. There you go again. But he was... Not afraid to take us on. There's nothing a retired governor can do about the Soviets, but a president. Now he can do a thing or two. Welcome to your life. I was a lifeguard on a river. There's no turning back. And I learned how to read the currents. Not just the ones on the surface, but also the ones deep underneath the water. I am about to start the biggest war of this century, and I'm not going to fire a single shot. You're going to blow up eight years of diplomacy. Well, if you think that got their undies in a while, you just wait. What did the president know, and when did he know it? What would you have me do? I want you to fight! Mr. Gorbachev! Tear down this wall. Well, there you have it. As you can see, it's a wonderful movie. Make sure yeah. and get out there and watch it. Absolutely. Go support Reagan, you guys. It's a, an amazing film. And take friends, take neighbors. Yep. It's not Christianese. It's just a good film about a good man and a good president. And we're proud of the team who did it. So, yeah, go see Reagan. That's right. Well, Holly, that uh, takes us to the end of today's show. Great show, as always. Thanks. God bless, everyone. Bye-bye now. Write to us at faithonfilmtv at gmail.com. That's faithonfilmtv at gmail.com. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at faithonfilmtv. Also, go to our YouTube channel, Faith on Film TV, and hit the subscribe button and the bell for notifications on our latest Faith on Film shows. <laughs>